would like to acknowledge the traditional uh, custodians on the land on which we're meeting, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respects to Elders past and present, and also pay my respects to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander in the audience today. So welcome everybody to Innovation Month, uh, the sixth anniversary of Innovation Month, and um, I'm absolutely uh, excited uh, to be here. But I'd like to start off with a question for everyone. Are you sick of asking for permission? I am. Um, a perennial feature of the public service is its hierarchy and the call of authority to those higher up. This might sound a bit strange coming from me as a secretary, but I'm all too aware that this sort of work culture uh, is actually one of the biggest barriers uh, to innovation. And I've said that in the past in terms of the hierarchy being probably the biggest barrier to innovation across the Australian public service. But when it comes to trying something different and when it comes to experimenting, you have my permission. And as the Minister for Innovation, Industry and Science, Arthur Sinodina says, when it comes to innovation, we must reset our mindset. And when the Prime Minister launched the Innovation and Science Agenda way back in December 2015, that was the, one of the main objectives is to change the culture and mindset of not just public servants, but the whole of the economy. So we must reset it from one of uh, silos to one of collaboration, and that's why being here uh, is such a good example. And from one of caution to one of experimentation. And from one where innovation is a side project to one where it is the core of everything we do. This isn't a top-down directive from senior leadership. Although I can assure you that all secretaries are on board with this principle. And in fact, Innovation Month does feature on the secretary's uh, board agenda. Not that we're competitive or anything. Um, yeah. It's a statement that experimenting, doing things and exploring innovative ways of working are the core of the APS and the core of what you do. It is the responsibility of every APS officer to explore the opportunities that are available to you uh, through initiatives such as Innovation Month the innovation labs and teams, and I know many of you are here, and the multiple initiatives within the innovation strategies across the departments and agencies of the APS. The APS has, a long way to, a long, has been a long way in the past few years to creating work environments and cultures receptive to new ideas. Many departments now have an innovation lab or space, and you'll be hearing about some of them today. These spaces offer staff the opportunity to experiment and build their skills so they can understand what is possible in innovation. Much work has been done in gov government and user-centred design, talking with your customers and stakeholders and making them part of the design process. The APS has a long history of tackling the challenge of cultural change and innovation. Innovation Month itself started in 2011 as a week-long program dedicated to building awareness of new ideas and new ways of working. It became part of a bundle of initiatives in the 2012 Innovation Action Plan, which laid out the path forward for building innovation culture and capacity in the APS by building awareness, encouraging collaboration, and providing leadership guidance. Another initiative in the 2012 Action Plan was the Public Sector Innovation Network, which today is the custodian of Innovation Month. And I was amazed at, at seeing the figures. The Public Sector Innovation Network is open to everyone and has over 3,500 members with a broad range of expertise. Its aim is to build awareness and capability of innovation in the APS, but its impact often goes further. It offers members the opportunity to share information with each other, and experience has shown that this often leads to, to more collaboration. Initiatives launched under the Public Sector Innovation Network include the Mentors Design Training Project, the Australian Futures Project, the Trial Innovation Hub, and many events of Innovation Month, which I'll go through shortly. Designed and developed through the shared resource of, of the Public Sector Innovation Network membership. In late 2015, uh, the Public Sector Innovation Network also launched the Yammer Group, which is open to any official working at any level of government in Australia, whether federal, state or local. It now consists of over 580 members from 150 different government organisations. And the result is a vast online network allowing public servants from all over the country to share their experiences and knowledge, crowdsource solutions and make new contacts to assist their day-to-day -day work. 
So now whether you're a public servant from TransLink in Queensland, Bayswater City Council in Western Australia or the ATO, you can connect with each other through the public sector innovation network. But it's not enough for the public service just to share ideas. Our innovation journey must have outcomes. It must do. And so the theme of Innovation Month 2017 is making it happen. And the program of events addresses the theme in two ways. First, it provides members of the public sector the opportunity to learn the tools and techniques to make it happen. And secondly, it provides examples of public sector innovation so that we can learn and leverage off others that have made it happen already. One example of the many exciting opportunities on offer during Innovation Month is the tour of our labs. I'm told the tour is being held on three separate dates and pencil these in on July the 12th, 19th and 27th. Each day will be filled uh, with visits to government and non-government innovation teams and labs across, across Canberra. Participants will learn hands-on techniques in user-centred design, research techniques and new technologies. For example, at the Department of Employment, participants will learn about the user-centred design projects being undertaken by the business improvement team to address strategic is issues such as the future of labour market support. In particular, participants will be involved in using journey, journey mapping exercises for job seeker personas. For example, they will step into the shoes of a young Indigenous job seeker or a mother looking to return to the workforce and then, then map that person's journey against the complex arrangements that they have to deal with, including interactions with employment services, employers, mentors and others. And I guess in the long term, it's up to us to try and break down those complex arrangements. As part of the tour of the labs, participants will also get to visit DHS's uh, Technology Innovation Centre, which will be showcasing an interactive display on how future technology opportunities can foster innovation. Another stop will be the DFAT Innovation Exchange, which has been focusing on collaborating with new partners to identify, trial and scale up new initiatives in the delivery of foreign aid, such as MIT Solve Initiative and the software giant Atlassian. The Innovation Exchange in Atlassian will challenge participants to develop an initiative that, that will prepare youth in the Indo-Pacific region for the workforce of the future. And this is important in that while new technology can generate jobs and increase labour productivity, it can also result in job displacement and in some sectors widen the skills gap. And certainly something uh, the Secretary's Board is focused on at the moment in terms of future of work. And finally, I like to think my own department's innovation lab, known as BizLab, and great to see Jana here, will be the crown jewel of the tour of the labs. <laughs> <laughs> BizLab is not a corner of the department where you can throw your problem and develop a solution and throw it back. We've, we've developed BizLab to wrap around multidisciplinary teams across from the department and the APS and to support direct engagement with people affected by our policies programs and regulation to create better outcomes. And some of the, the projects have been right at the core of business. For example, rethinking the administration of the research and development tax incentive, building the digital capability of small and medium-sized enterprises, and improving business research collaboration. And we've done a, an internal one in terms of how we do, do performance management a lot better across the public service. And, and I guess as leaders and employees, uh, that's not... Um, uh, a key uh, uh, element uh, that we're good at. And during the tour of BizLab, we'll be undertaking interview role play and, and dispersing some of the myths around user-centred design. So no pressure, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> um, something that I should reiterate though, BizLab and other labs um, are not working on side projects. They're actually working at the heart of their respective portfolios. And I think that's one of the important things I've seen, I guess, in the past six years of Innovation Month, that that now we've started to embed innovation uh, more in terms of our core business and mainstream business. It's not just seen as a, a nice add-on to have. Um, another example of making it happen that I'd like to touch on is the 2017 Innovation Awards. These are run in partnership with the Institute of Public Administration Australia, or IPA, um, ACT, and it's great to see Drew here. And of course, I'm not biased, it's one of my favourite organisations in the ACT. 
Um, the finalists were announced four weeks ago and they made their final pitches last week to the panel of experts from both inside and outside the public sector. And there are three award categories, the innovation solutions, culture and practice, and digital and data. And I understand there's also a special judges uh, choice award this year. And the winners will be announced at a, an awards ceremony by one of my ministers, Minister Sinodinas, on July the 26th. And there will also be a larger event in August that will showcase all the work of the finalists, all of them presenting great examples of making innovation happen. And if the awards from last year are anything to, to go by, they're absolutely inspiring. And you'll notice we have some of the finalists here with us today. We have the Defence Industry and Innovation Program from my department, the Finance Transformation Program um, from the Department of Finance, the Department of Social Services Program, Fostering Collaboration, Developing a Longitudinal Data Community of Practice, and CSIRO with their ON program, and the ACT Government with One Patient, One Record Renal Network. And um, now as a, as a preview, I think we'll be watching a, a short video uh, from the pitch, pitching session that happened last week. And this will give you some insight into the spirit of the day and some of the input from the finalists who presented. Baz is a $900 million deregulation saving for small business, which equates to about 14 million hours we're giving back to small business. We're really excited about what we've delivered and using this as a platform for future digital automation, we think it places small business in a really good position to move forward. Our innovation is about saving life, building stability and building wealth in our region. We have two goals, to build a global movement to address malnutrition and to see a 10% reduction in rates of malnutrition in the Indo-Pacific region in 10 years. This real-time responsiveness meant for the first time in Australian government history. The second the Prime Minister clicked agreed, the department could immediately act. When wholesale market prices is low, we pay a top-up amount to the, to the generator. When it's high, the generator pays us. We're leveraging mobility, capability, new technology and design thinking to come up with new ways to solve old problems. The work we're doing here and the model we're trying to encapsulate in the way we work can be translated across any public service department really and we want to share it. Why shouldn't we all work better and more efficiently? The ON program is an accelerator that helps Australian research teams find the best possible commercial pathway for their science. From a researcher's point of view, it's maximum impact in a short amount of time. They fast track your research from the beginning to the very end point. We established an entirely new procurement approach that supported innovation. We no longer rely on the standard RFT, Austender approach. Industry can submit short form proposals to Defence any time of the year. We created the National Centre for Longitudinal Data, lifted it out and placed it in the centre of this system. seen a 60% reduction in the number of uh, manual assessments and that's freed up our officers to do target the higher risk vessels and by looking at the high risk vessels make sure we manage the biosecurity risk where we most need to be. Making sure that we manage the biosecurity risk in an efficient and effective way is really essential to making sure that we, uh, we continue to enjoy our unique environment. So we're going to go from 117 days under the current system to get a decision on average. In our trial, when we didn't have all the automation, we were just working with a minimum viable product, we got it down to 75 days. The quickest claim was four days, and we will have claims that are done on the spot. We're getting our lives back. One of the most obvious ways is docs are actually coming to us in Biga and Kuma and places like that. We don't have to travel three hours. State of the environment reporting has undergone evolution from that to something you can look at on your phone. 
We've taken something that was really quite a, an old obsolete process but that was considered normal and truly turned it on its head and turned it into something that's quite exciting. Innovation is creativity. It's actually breaking the stereotypes and, and dreaming about something big and then making it happen, taking the steps to realise your dreams. Thank you very much for all the presentations uh, and thank you for making our job so difficult. Thanks Rob, I think we should give him a great round of applause. So. Seems like props help, but um, they're a pretty hard taskmasters um, at the session, which I think was done in Department of Finance, DHS, DHS. Centre, which is absolutely uh, fantastic. And one of the things that I get so delighted about is seeing the enthusiasm um, on public servants' faces in terms of really making a difference and, and indeed as the Innovation Month this year um, pronounces, making things happen. So you have got a, a, a hard task uh, ahead. So what, do, what does Innovation Month offer this year? Some events I'd like to highlight um, include Making Innovation Happen with James O'Loughlin. This is in partnership with the Department of Immigration and Border Protection, and you'll be hearing about uh, some of that shortly. The Department of Immigration and Border Protection is also providing a large range of events for public service colleagues to attend, including a tour of their user-centric design lab tour and talks on encouraging intrapreneurship and competitive co-design and machine learning and the dark web. Um, so the Immigration and Border Protection have quite uh, a few things on. At the Department of Environment and Energy on the 11th, there's Making Change Happen a discussion on the drivers of human behaviour, uh, drawing on the learnings of a large-scale behavioural change project on protecting the Great Barrier Reef. The Department of Social Services is hosting a, a lunchtime screening of the excellent documentary Design Disruptors, and on the 25th there's a, a leading public policy workshop <coughs> at the Department of Health. And with the Australian Public Service Commission, uh, there's the Australian Government Leadership Network Conference in Perth, on the 20th and Adelaide on the 27th. Maybe it's warmer over there, so a good incentive to leave Canberra. Uh, all these events are open for public servants to uh, participate and many of these events are free of charge, so please do take advantage of that and tell your colleagues. Um, now I'd like to cross to some other members of the Public Sector Innovation Network who will be talking about what Innovation Month means to them and what it can offer. And as we're in startup in a startup incubator today, we thought it would be suitable to have these presented as one-minute pictures. Uh, we'll hear that's working with ministers too, so it's a very good <laughs> skill um, to develop. Uh, we'll hear first from Tom Patterson, Assistant Director of Innovation at the Department of Immigration and Border Protection, then Jane Jarvis, Assistant Director for Innovation at the Department of Infrastructure and Regional Development, and we'll talk about how their Innovation Month program is helping their innovation strategy. And finally, Graham Loney, Manager of the Public Sector Innovation Network team, will talk about the complex conundrums challenge uh, they've been developing. So I might cross now to Tom, who will introduce the rest of the um, speakers. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, I hope this is on. I mean, it kind of is. <coughs> um, Okay, so a lot of you will remember James O'Loughlin from the New Inventors when it was on telly. Now, when I first heard James speak on the subject of innovation, I was absolutely blown away and I literally chased him out of the hall and asked him to come and present at Innovation Month. Happily, that all worked out fine. Um, what I was originally going to stand up here and say, come along, come along, come along, because we've got 300 seats and we're not sure if we're overbooked. As of this morning, we've sold out Bill Conan and there's only 60 seats left in Civic. So my message to you is hurry up, hurry up, <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> um, for any of my Velco crew, Northwest represent. Now, uh, we do have quite a lot of space left with Steve Brody's entrepreneurship workshop. So jump on that if uh, you haven't got into James. So Steve is here today if you actually want to meet him. So on to the next pitch. Wow, that was quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> pressure's on. 
Um, so yeah, at Infrastructure and Regional Development, we started with an innovation agenda last year, and that had three goals of disruption, design, and data. And in 2017, we've been focusing on some demonstrator projects with design thinking, um, training, and events. Uh, so we were really excited with Innovation Month, so we've actually started early. Uh, so we've already had a couple of things uh, on, including Dr. Amantha Imber that came to present on Innovation Survivor, how to outthink, outsmart, and outlast your competitors. Uh, and we've also got some upcoming things, including uh, design thinking with Lego. That <coughs> kind of sold out, I think, with the Lego thing in there. That uh, <laughs> one went pretty quick. Uh, we've also got a show and tell showcase event where we've got um, <coughs> staff that have participated in events and activities coming back to all share and uh, discuss what they've done and how it's going to help in their work. Uh, Data61 is going to come and present uh, to us. And Dr. Jason Fox is going to give a keynote address as well on changing the game. Uh, and then a guest speaker panel on technology uh, with ITS, Intelligent Transport <coughs> Systems. So we've still got plenty of spots on some of our upcoming events, so please do come along if you'd like. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, as uh, Glenn said, Graham Money from the Public Sector Innovation Network. Uh, for those of you that do know me, uh, start the clock. I do have a minute. Uh, just <laughs> a little bit further unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. So the Public <laughs> Sector Innovation Network team has been um, helping coordinate the complex conundrums across agency, still building workshop, being delivered as a group collaborative effort by PMC, Employment, DFAT, and DHS. It's an experimental approach to test the idea that we can collaboratively solve the complex problems at the heart of the APS's core business. In Define and Refine, the teams will learn the core skills and techniques to rapidly design and deliver policy projects and learn the methods for understanding user needs and motivation. In Synthesize and Ideate, they will apply design and visual thinking methods to identify opportunities and create volumes of ideas. And in Prototype and Pitch, teams will prototype concepts, whether they be service, product, or policy, and finalise their recommendations by developing skills in building a narrative, making infographics, and producing a convincing pitch. Teams will finish their collaborative experience by presenting their recommendations to a, a cross-APS panel of senior leaders and um, perhaps some external innovators as well. And most importantly, they will reflect on their innovation mindset journey and how they have helped make it happen. I'm not judging at all. <laughs> <laughs> so that's absolutely fantastic. I, I'll, I'll be fine without okay, the microphone. No so, ta. Um, get involved and thank you all uh, for being here today. I know it's freezing coming out. Um, uh, this morning, although not as cold as the weekend. Um, but why are we doing this? I mean, we can make a difference as a public service and we do want to make things happen. And, and I, I, I've got a quite simple philosophy in, in the way I do my work. There's no problem that can't be solved. And just that some take a little longer than others. Some we've been working on for years and years, but um, I think if we have that mindset in terms of problem solving, making a difference and making it happen, then I think we're all in a, in a good space. And so I really thank you. Get all your colleagues on board. Um, this isn't just a, a cliche thing that we're doing. This is absolutely something uh, that we should be very proud of. And I thank you and I thank all the participants and look forward to seeing as many of you at the Innovation Ward. So thank you very much.